I'm just about to break out my kitchen plimps. Now, the kitchen plimps have been made out of 18 millimeter Tricoir MDF. Now, anyone who watches some of the stuff that I do knows that I am a lover of Tricoir MDF. Yes, and it's expensive, but it will last forever. So, your kitchen plimps are in contact with the kitchen floor quite often they get you know the floor gets mopped and they get a bit of moisture so if anyone's ever taken an old kitchen apart the plimps often suffer from the ingress of moisture so i've had it all ripped down edged mdf preparation tape spray primered and then it's got a couple of coats of the color prior to the last hand painting on the side each section has kind of some quirky bits around it where we have integrated fridge freezers. Each appliance needs 200 square centimeters of airflow, which equates to, you know, a slot. Now that slot needs to multiply to 200. So for example, if you made it 50 centimeters long, then you're gonna to need to make it four centimeters deep. What I'm trying to do is make sure that the eye line, when you're looking at the cabinets from a distance, the plinth is set back. I'm trying to make that as small as possible so you don't necessarily read it. Now I've set my plinths back around about 75 millimeters to the face. I can actually have um, a decent slot, but it's not really gonna be seen unless you're on your hands and knees. So I've got some short sections and where my unit, I've got a 600 unit, say here, and a 300 next to it in this particular run. And it's the same on the other side, it's all isometric. I'm gonna make my slot the full length of this plinth, which keeps it narrower. And I've worked out that if I travel 72 centimeters, I only need to come down 2.8 centimeters or 720 millimeters and 28 millimeters down. So I'm gonna get on and break all these out now. So that's all of the plinth material broken out now into their lengths with the mitres, etc. Now it's a matter of putting the slots in that I spoke about, the ventilation, and also I've got, it's part of my central vacuum system is this floor sweeping slot. Now how this works is you knock it with your toe, like so, let me just, you knock it with your toe. It, it creates a switch on the contact, and then you sweep with a broom straight to there, and that goes straight back through into the central vacuum system in the boiler room. First one we'll cut out is for the vacuum. Now let's change this blade over. What we want is we want a down cut blade for this. So this is a normal jigsaw which is cutting on the up stroke. So what we want to use is a down cut stroke so the face is nice and clean. I know it's got a cover on it, so this small device is obviously got a lot of cover, but it's just for practice, so we'll get a down cut blade. So I'm gonna take out the ventilation slot with the rail saw. And what I like to do with the rail saw is I've got a couple of pencil marks, I'll just move this up, like a couple of pencil marks which I basically use for different things. And one will mean that's where you wanna plunge down on the cut so you don't cut back too far. And then there's another one there which I use if you wanna go a bit further to, to get, so it's on the other, if you're cutting from the back. get on and do the rest then we'll go and get them fitted one of the materials that we've chosen to go in place of panels in the doors is this really nice brass mesh it's like an antique brass mesh and it picks up on the handles and knobs that we've had from a company called R. Martin, who make beautiful you know knobs and, and that sort of stuff for kitchens so what this is going to involve is I have my shaker door here and I want to take the panel out um, and replace it with the brass grill which is going to have a bead on the inside of the door which will be painted in which actually holds it. Now um, at the time of ordering 
we were unsure whether or not we were going to incorporate the brass. We hadn't a sample that we liked, but we've sourced the product that we really like now, and we are going to go ahead with it, which involves me removing the panels from four small doors. Now these panels are grooved in to the actual door construction, so it's not a matter of removing a bead or anything like that to get them out. I'm going to have to actually take them out as carefully as possible. So to do this I am going to use a router and the first cutter I'm going to use is a straight trimming cutter with a ball bearing and I'll start by boring a hole straight through the panel with a decent cutter with one of these really nice like Forstner bits and then I'll plunge the router in and I'll follow the face side of the door and that will remove the panel. Now it will leave the section of panel in the groove but then I'll switch router cutters to this rebate cutter which has also got a guide bush. I'll set that in and I'll rebate the back of the door which will expose the panel. Then I can just take out a little bit of panel and that's it. So that is the process complete of removing the panelled section from these shaker doors here. So I just run through what I did again. First of all I started by drilling a hole through the panel. That enabled me to drop in the router with a guided cutter. Let me just see if I can put I think I put that away in the box. So the guided cutter, two flute cutter with a guide bearing on it. That followed that aperture there. It dropped out the panel here. And then I went with a rebate cutter, again with a bearing guide bush. I ran that around. That exposed the edge of the panel. And I was able to just pop that out with a chisel. And then I finished the corners off with a really nice sharp chisel. I just paired them back you know, this sort of action, and cleaned all that out. I've taken the Aris off of here. Now I'm just going to go and prime these and get them base coated, ready for the painter, so he hasn't got to do that. And then we'll rehang those once they've been fully finished. Put the brass panels in, a nice hockey stick moulding on the back, which will be mitred and pinned with my little air pinner. So I've already put a couple of long handles on, the fridge and the freezer door because we need to be able to use those. Now all of my doors are being taken off and then the painter is going to paint them all, hand paint them all. I'm using an antique brass, these are a solid brass knob and I'm also using a tea bar which is really nice, it's a really nice product. What I particularly like about this, it's got a locating pin there, stop it from going on the wonk, obviously that doesn't matter with a knob and the rationale is everything that is sideways is a t-bar so where we've got something like a dishwasher that will be a t-bar because it pulls where we've got a drawer unit like the one down here that will also be a t-bar and then where we've got pairs of doors there'll obviously be knobs now i like to choose exactly where to position those knobs based on two factors. First of all, aesthetics. Um, I don't necessarily like to see them on the corner, although it's quite fashionable. What I like to do is have them around about 150 millimeters up from the edge, um, and obviously in the center of a rail where it's only short, 
And where I've got long pan drawers and I'm having a pair of knobs, they'll be also 150 in. So the quickest way of doing this is just assembling a simple template. So I've made that 300 long. I'm going to position a pilot hole in the centre and in the centre of the rail, obviously. And then what that enables me to do is to go around, open the door up, push it on, line it up, pilot it through. If it's an opposite handed door, just turn it upside down because it's isometric. So I'm just going to pop that together now. Then we'll set that out and I'll set that out from the back side because that's the edge of the door. My rails or my styles are 90 millimeters, so I'll be 45 millimeters in. So there we have it. some joinery grade softwood from a local supply click and collect went there and got it and it was just like bendy it was all twisted and I said guys is this the best you got it was only five pieces and they said oh it's just been standing around and it was char they charged me a premium for it so I said guys forget it give me the refund um, then I rang a good mate of mine who's got a um, timber merchant business said Pete you need to um, organize a little bit of timber for me and he said fine and so he organised these bits of timber for me and we met and exchanged timber and money. Anyway, so what I'm doing is I'm forming, this is just one section of it, like it's, it's a cornice effectively, but because this is quite a modern contemporary kitchen, you can see that all we've got is a nice square edge and a round over. And then we've got a very simple mould which goes above that to the ceiling which will go on afterwards. And that'll be an MDF moulding as well which is, as I say, pinned to the ceiling uh, and to this face afterwards. So how have I done this? So what I did first is I went round, I machined all the timber up, planed it all, rounded it all over where necessary, and then I took each section, I rough cut everything in, held them in situ, marked them with a margin stick, and then I took them to the saw, mitered them all, and then I dominoed all the corners. So this is a section here which has been these ones are already joined together, glued and fixed. This one's ready to do in situ. Um, the far end behind me, I made the whole lot in one, slide that over. I'm working on my own. This side's just too big to do that, so I've got the end here and the end there. And I'm going to get those together fully, and then I'll join them to the middle section, the long section that goes through. So that's the, the far end. And then that will be joining to that will be joining to this one. We love a dot. We've got a love a domino, and so that's that's one section there, if you like, on this open shelving unit, which is the Lincoln Walnut by Egger, which is, as I say, I'm waxing lyrical about it, but it is beautiful stuff. But we've got a MDF spray front that I've made for that. Again, it's butted with dominoes, so it's mortised and tendon effectively. And I'm gonna be fixing that up there with a combination of a polymer adhesive, something I use a lot more these days. And also I'm gonna be using brads. I'm gonna use 18 gauge brads, 50 mil long, and I'll have just enough to keep it all back and true, level and plumb until our polymer goes off. Now, what I like to do is test this kind of material. Here, I've got a section of the Lincoln Walnut here. It's an offcut. I've also got some painted MDF here and here. I've got a section here which is joined in the edge and I've got a section here which is joined on the painted side. So, all I've done is I've put a bead of the adhesive, pushed it in, no clamping, and left that since this morning. An adhesive which takes quite a while to cure, but it grabs and it holds and it goes off really nicely. So this one's actually been on a few days and you can see there's no way that's coming off there. When you're bonding different materials together, there are polymers out there now which are just much better than the typical solvent-based grab adhesives. And anyone who uses the water-based grab adhesives knows if you are running adhesive all over these edges, 
you've got to go away, walk away, pick up the work, you've got to offer it in, you've got to fiddle with it. Sometimes by the time you've walked away, got back there, it's already skinned and you can forget it because all it's going to do is as you push it in, it's going to flatten that skin off and it's not going to bond to your work. So the polymer hangs around, it doesn't tend to skin, it seems to set all the way through. So it's not an outside in. And the other thing about a water-based grab adhesive as well, if you're using a material, let's say it's the end of the MDF there, it grabs the life out of it and it just cures on the outside straight away. And again, you can just peel the moldings off. And if you've tried using skirting boards with that solvent-based grab or the water-based grab, you get the skinning issue or you get like one material sucking the life out of it if it's not sealed and that's it, forget it, it's just gonna fall off. The beauty of using a domino here, if you've got the thickness and the material will take it. I've actually made whole sections up, I've sanded them. These have got primer and they've had a couple of base coats. They're still gonna need a pre a finish on site. Or say here, on site, we are on site. So the beauty of this is they just simply slot on and this is held and it's just a matter of finding that and it's absolutely perfect. So what I'm going to do is actually put a little bit of mitre adhesive in there as well. Put a little bit more on, providing it doesn't drip and run down your work. You get a little bit more time with it. If you activate one side and you put the glue on the other, sometimes the glue's a bit thin, as soon as it makes contact, it's boom, it's off. If you've got a little bit more glue on there, you've got that two or three seconds just to do that final adjustment. Keep that nice and damp as well. Slot him in. Magic. That'll be really strong in about 10, 15 seconds time. But I'll leave that to go off while I don't glue another one. So I've fitted the cornice section, the first of the cornice sections because there's another moulding that goes in front up to the ceiling and that will go on uh, next week sometime. But I've got here this front that I made to go over these units here. So I'm just about to attach that now. Um, it's, I've shot it in, it's all perfect. It all lines up with all of the shelves, etc. I'm gonna remove it, put the polymer on, carefully replace it, make sure it's all nice and flat, and then I'll put a number of brads in just to make it hold until that polymer sets. I'm using an extremely small bead, and I'm trying to make sure that it doesn't come out anywhere. So I'm sort of making the, the, the silicon closer to the top of the work than the bottom, and dead in the middle when I'm doing something here, for example, let's get it down the middle here. That's absolutely what you want there. As I said, you have got good time with this adhesive. It's, it's not aggressive, it doesn't skin. It's kind on the hands. It's not like PU where it just completely covers you in black. And you wouldn't want to use a PU on here. It's just too dodgy. You know, you can't clean it off. This will clean off with a white, you know, the type you can get from all of the merchants. Everyone's using the wipes now in buckets and tubs, about £10 ago. It's pretty stiff, this stuff. It's got a bit of um, a hard consistency and it's not cold today. I wouldn't like to use it in the cold. It would be awful. The good thing about using an MDF for a moulding or a facade is that it doesn't tend to shrink and move just like timber. Quite often we use tulip wood in kitchens. It's a very stable material, paints really well, but even that will shrink a tiny bit. Sometimes you find you get a little bit of shrinking on a joint. Now the next thing, I'll just put a little bit on the top edge of the frame so it locks into this rail here. We are going to gently Put it in, nylon on at the top. Make sure we don't get any glue squeezing out where we don't want it. That 
that's it. Eighteen gauge brad. We'll start by getting one nice and tight in the middle here. And that's about it.